Good morning, YouTube Jesus lovers. I want to just come in with a friendly reminder today of the fact that life is short and what you're spending your time on today. I'll actually ask it this way. What did you spend your time and your life doing yesterday? And how will the kingdom be impacted by that? A lot of people will answer that question, well, probably not really much at all, but it was because I was doing something important. I was meeting with my CPA. I was having a, a serious conversation with my parents. I, um, well, it was my friend's birthday, right? All of these reasons, we have a lot of reasons, and there's actually a parable Jesus shares about this. It's one of the most powerful parables that I have never heard anybody share from a pulpit ever in my life. Again, I'm sure somebody has, but it's odd to me that I've never heard a single person share this. Jesus says in this parable that he asks for the people who had got wedding invitations to end up coming to this wedding event that he was having or hosting. And they went and reached out to all these people. And one of them said, hey, I will definitely go. Um, but, but you got to give me a second because I just got married and I want to spend some time with my wife. And then the other one said, yeah, I'd love to go, but I've got a lot of work to do around the house. Farming is what he said. And another one said, I have a new business and I really need to focus on my new business. But then after that, all these people had no reason to say that they were not interested in coming. They just said they would be coming later. And Jesus' response was, those people don't make it in heaven. He said, these are the people who had the invitation and chose to do nothing with the invitation. Go to the highways and the byways and find me every single person, the, the pitiful, poor, blind, and naked type. And I am going to fill this room up for my wedding day. And he filled it up and even found one of the people who were in there, but his clothes were tarnished. His clothes were dirty. And they said, we're going to have to kick him out because he's not dressed appropriately for the wedding day. This parable is in reference to us as Christians spending our time and our days on everything but the things Jesus has asked us to and saying, Jesus, I'll follow you one day. I'll really take my faith seriously one day. But for right now, I've got other more important things that I need to take care of in my Christian walk. Or excuse me, in my, in my life, not in my Christian walk. And there's gonna be a time where it's too late, Jesus says. And we don't want that time to ever happen in our life because we wanna be ready at all times. And again, it's not this living in constant fear and shaking in our boots kind of thing. But it's us as Christians making sure that we're constantly focused on things above. Then it mentions one person who's in the wedding feast but gets kicked out of the wedding feast. What does that mean? Well, you know, this is a this is literally an example of a false convert. Somebody who's in the wedding feast but his clothes got tarnished for whatever reason. And Jesus says, you're going to have to get out. This is somebody who's a false convert. Somebody who's going to church every single Sunday. And I believe that this parable, this specific analogy right here plays such a huge part into so many Christians' lives around us. That these are people who are not living for the Lord, but they're going to church, they're around the right crowds. They might even be going to a small group. They might have even have served in a mission trip or gone and do a war, played at a worship team at one point. They may have done all of those things and they're still not born again because Jesus didn't say that the standard, the measuring stick of born again is you doing those things. The standard, the measuring stick is you living a sold out life for Jesus. And you either are doing that or you're not doing that. And you would hate to be one of those people who's really convinced that you're going to be able to make it into the wedding feast one day. All for Jesus to go, whoa, that, you didn't make it in. You, no, 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 no. You, you're going to actually have to depart from me because I don't know you. I don't, I don't remember you from any of my times, you know, having, having any other sorts of festival. I don't remember you being here. It's important for us as Christians to consider what we do on a daily basis is going to play a massive impact into our eternity. And again, it's not this workspace thing. If you didn't pray for enough people today, if you didn't preach enough people today, if you didn't read enough today, it's not supposed to be one of these things that we live in fear of. But I'm just asking you, like, like, look at the broad scope of your life. Are you seeing that you're doing things for the Lord regularly or you're doing things for you regularly, right? Like, I'm about to, like, go into the store here, right? I don't know if you can see Kroger right there. But, like, people are going to be in there that need Jesus. And it's my opportunity, not even my obligation. I don't want to think of it as an obligation. I mean, it is. But, like, this is my opportunity to be able to talk to these people about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords who saved my life and who wants to save theirs too. And I get to bring Eden Nevaeh along to do it with me. No, sorry, I got to get a picture. 
I don't think you can see back there, but that's okay. Aiden Nevaeh is coming along with me because my daughter is going to grow up knowing what it looks like to live for the kingdom. And it's going to be normal Christianity seeing dad preach the gospel when he goes out in public places. It's going to be normal Christianity to see mom start just praying for somebody and blessing somebody financially because we know that they need to see Jesus manifested somehow. And if we're not the ones manifesting Jesus, we might be the only chance they get to see Jesus. So uh, my kids grow up getting to see that because they have parents who care about the kingdom first, not about themselves first. It's challenging, it's not easy. I'm not saying this is something that's easy to do. I'm not saying I'm perfect at it. I'm not saying I've never messed up at it. I definitely have. I've had plenty of times where I felt like I was supposed to say to somebody something to somebody and I chose not to for no good reason. So I totally get it, trust me. But I'm not going to make excuses as to why I'm not doing what Jesus called me to do. So anyways, go out there today. Do something for the kingdom. Not for you. Do something for the kingdom first. Do something for you later. Love you all.